Hello, greetings. Uh, let's take a look at problem six. So in problem six, we are asked to estimate the constant pressure heat capacity of liquid hexane at one bar 20 degrees C using the SRK equation of state. Okay, and so up to uh, chapter five so far in the text, um, we've seen that we can use equations of state to calculate uh, molar volume and compressibility. Um, but now in chapter five, we've also introduced the ability to calculate residual properties using equations of state. Okay. So the basic idea with the residual property is it's defined as your, your actual property is defined as being, say, a sum of your ideal gas um, or residual term, or therefore the residual term is, you know, actual and excess of that of an ideal gas. And the general idea being, in terms of defining things relative to an ideal gas, um, the motivation being is that ideal gases are physically well-defined states, uh, but then also, typically, uh, the properties of an ideal gas um, are readily available. Okay, so case in point here, if I were to look uh, in the appendix of our text um, here, um, so let me scroll through, uh, the appendix is scale, um, scanned up, so there's appendix A, critical properties, but then appendix B is ideal gas heat capacities. Right, and so uh, for hexane, right, if I were to find hexane on my list, um, there's an heptane, who are you, and hexane right here, right? So uh, we have an expression for the constant pressure heat capacity that's valid over the range 100 to 1,000. Um, whoop, you just have to look at the units, 100 to 1,000. 1, um, they don't, oh, Kelvin, all right, so 100 to 1,000 Kelvin. Um, and then we're given uh, model constants, and we have a simple polynomial expression uh, to, uh, to calculate CP. Okay, so in the back of our book, uh, you know, CP is readily tabulated, um, or the ideal gas contribution to CP is readily tabulated um, for a wide range of, of fluids. Okay, so, you know, kind of that case in point, um, that ideal gas values are typically uh, readily available. So where we use our equation of state is to calculate the more complicated residual term, which is going to result from the fact that molecules interact and take up space. Okay, um, so you know, let's do it. <laughs> How are we going to do it? So the general idea again is yeah, I'm going to define my actual property here, CP, as being the sum of an ideal gas term plus a residual term. Okay, and notation of the book would just be R. Okay, so idea being ideal gas term is readily available. So I could go pull the constants for the polynomial from the back of the book for hexane, uh, plug in 20 degrees C, right? Remember heat capacity of an ideal gas is only a function of T, it's independent of pressure. Uh, so I could readily plug in or convert 20 degrees C to Kelvin, uh, so 293.15 Kelvin, uh, and compute CP. Okay, so cool. Um, I guess just one note, when you look at the correlation, they give you CP over R. Um, the idea of CP and R have the same units. So CP divided by R is dimensionless. Um, so once you evaluate CP over R from the polynomial, just multiply by R in your favorite units um, to get uh, your ideal gas heat capacity. All right, so this term is, is known. All right, and so then our goal is essentially to calculate the residual term. Okay, well, how am I going to calculate the residual term using um, our equation of state? Okay, well, definition of CP, so P CP is by definition dH dt at constant P. Okay, so we've already said we could break up our heat capacity into an ideal gas and residual term, right? So therefore, it should stand that CP residual is going to be equal to partial HR partial T at constant P, okay? But you could also see just by completeness that if I were to come over here to my definition of CP, okay, I could break H as H ideal gas plus HR partial T at constant P, right? And then this would just become DH ideal gas DT at constant P plus dHr dt at constant p. All right, so you know I get then that CP is just here's my ideal gas term plus your residual term. All right, so you can you can tackle this any way you want. <laughs> but anyways, the idea being is CPR 
then is by definition partial HR, partial T at constant P. Okay. Now, and, and, and so what we're going to do then is, um, you know, one, I could take the expression for um, residual enthalpy um, in the text uh, for SRK equation of state, and I could try and differentiate with respect to T at constant P. Um, or what we're going to do here, all right, and the keyword they, they also mentioned is estimate, is we'll just estimate it uh, via finite difference. Um, so we'll say, you know, HR at um, uh, T1 minus HR oop, at uh, T naught divided by T1 minus T naught, right? And so if we wanted to do, say, forward finite difference, T naught could be, um, you know, a 20 degree C, um, or even backward finite difference, right? And T1 being um, that second point. So, yeah, that, that's all. That's all we need to do. And so maybe, you know, we could say let uh, then T naught be 20 degree C, and T1 could be say 30 degree C. We can evaluate the residual enthalpy at those two temperatures, um, and then approximate CP residual um, using our finite difference expression. And then um, to get CP ideal gas, you would just have to plug into the polynomial um, in the back of the book, right? Evaluate that at 20 degrees C, um, and you'll get that. So you'll have a number for this. We'll get a number for that. Add them together, and you'll get an estimate of CP uh, at 20 degrees C in, in one bar. Okay. But um, let's let's do it. Okay. Um, just so they can demo um, our MATLAB code as as well. Okay. So um, and Okay, last thing before we demo our math lab code, okay, is we're told we have a liquid, okay, and then remember for SRK, okay, if I'm thinking about my uh, my black box, okay, I'm going to want T, P, T, C, P, C, and omega. As long as I have T, P, T, C, P, C, and omega, I'm all set, all right? We know the temperature and pressure that's given the problem statement, um, that's 20 degrees C and one bar, okay? And then I'll look up my critical properties in the back of the book, okay? And then for our second point, we'll use a T1 of, of 30 degrees C, okay? So let's do it, okay? So I'm going to uh, pop over to uh, MATLAB, which I have open, and I have open our um, SRK uh, MATLAB code that it provides you with um, in this chapter, okay? And I'm just going to create a new script. Um, so let's do, t uh, let's collect... Uh, critical properties first, okay, and looking at the, the code, okay, again, temperature was in Kelvin and pressure was in uh, bars, okay, oh, ah, let's yes, flip over here, so we'll do uh, temperature, Kelvin, pressure and bars, okay, so TCK, Critical temperature in Kelvin is, oh, go to appendix 1, or A, this goes TC, PC, and omega's last. Hexane here, here's TC, 507.60. PC in bars, uh, Find hexane again, hexane 30.25, and omega uh, 0 0.3. Okay. Okay. Then I need um, temperature. And K and pressure bar. So pressure is one bar. Okay, I'll do P bar. Then I'll do uh, T naught. Okay, yeah, do T naught, which is my 20 degrees C. And I'll just type it in 20 plus 273.15. And then I'll do T1. Let's just take, say we take our second temperature to be uh, 30 degrees C, okay? So we're using uh, forward finite difference. Um, we're just trying to estimate um, here, so it, not a huge ordeal uh, as far as this problem is concerned, okay? 
Okay, so let's get HR not. Okay, so um, and actually we're gonna get more than HR not because you see the first optional variable that's returned is is volume. Okay, and so what I'm gonna do is let me have I'm gonna have it return volume um, and HR. Okay. Reason being is that if we get more than one real HR, we need to be able to identify um, which phase we have. Now, in general, we know that the, the vapor phase is going to have the, the larger enthalpy, um, and so we would expect the vapor phase to have the larger residual enthalpy. Um, but let's get volume because it's easier to compare the volumes uh, as well. Um, and that's the one that's typically uh, most familiar to you. So I'm just going to copy the function signature. Okay. What I'm going to say is I'm going to call that V1. Okay, V1, and I'll call this HR1. Okay, I won't worry about returning the others, so I will just delete them. Okay, so here I call this would be um, uh, T1. We call, well, let's call this, let's do the zeroth case first. So T0, okay, P bar, omega. Uh, TC and Kelvin and PC and bar. Okay, so let's save that. Nope. And so this is problem six. Okay. So if I were to say run this, let's just make sure we're, we're working here. Okay. So you get um, three real um, molar volumes. Oh, and I, I take it back. Um, we're looking for a liquid phase. Okay. All right, liquid. So liquid would be the, so I said the vapor phase has the larger enthalpy, so we'd expect it to have the largest um, residual enthalpy. Um, it would also have the smallest um, or largest molar volume, so the liquid phase would have the smallest molar volume, so it would be um, this one. Okay, so it looks like at, you know, here's our value at 20 degrees C, so let's call this, say, HR naught would be HR naught um, 3. Okay, and this is going to be in in joules. Okay, and you know another way I could do that, I could build it into this code, is I could do hr not is say um, min hr not. Okay, now let's get uh, hr one. Okay, so we're going to call again. Okay, let's get this v one. HR1, put a T1 in there. Okay. So we can comment this out since this should be working right. Let me unsuppress that just so we can confirm it's working right. Okay, so now if I run this, okay, HR0, the final value, HR1, we get three real roots, so it's going to be the the smallest V and hence the fall smallest H. So HR1 will also be min HR1. And then to estimate CP residual, okay, our estimate um, would be HR1 minus HR naught divided by uh, T1, did I do underscore K? And uh, just T1 and then T naught. Okay, let's see what that looks like. So, uh, estimate of CP residual is 49.7216. Uh, okay, cool. Okay, um, so that's our estimate. And so this would be in joules per mole Kelvin since H would be uh, in units of joules per mole. Uh, per code. There's our estimate of CP residual. Then you just have to get an estimate of um, the ideal gas heat capacity or, or you know, calculate the ideal gas heat capacity from the polynomials in, in the back of your text. Okay. And then again, just, just looking at the values here, um, remember that we have a liquid phase here. So we would expect um, the liquid to have the smallest molar volume, right? Our vapor phase is going to have the highest molar volume. And then when we think about liquids and vapors, our vapor phase is going to have the highest um, enthalpy, or the um, enthalpy of a vapor phase would be higher than that of a, a liquid. All right, and so the liquid value would be uh, the smallest. Um, and so you can, you know, confirm just by matching up with 
um, the molar volumes. Um, and then another thing to notice is, remember these are uh, residual enthalpies. So residual is relative to an ideal gas, so uh, actual enthalpy relative to that of an ideal gas. And so we see liquid under these conditions, right? So for liquid um, hexane, we get negative residual enthalpies, right? It's our um, actual enthalpy, so the enthalpy of our liquid hexane is less than that um, of an ideal gas at the same conditions, right? Which makes sense. Okay, um, so we just use simple finite difference, um, estimate the residual heat capacity, and then if you go and you calculate the ideal gas term from the polynomial in the back of your book, you are all set, you've got it. All right, so hopefully um, that helps with problem six.